Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakurash. Yahweh is the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father, Bahasham, meaning in the name. Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, and powerful name of his only begotten Son, who is the Savior of the nation of Israel, starting off with the elect. Within the nation of Israel and Israel consists of you so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, as well as your Israelite foreigners scattered abroad that may look like the nations where you've been scattered to, but are Israelites. And I also want to give the honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hope of the elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and in truth. All right, this is the brother you call from the GMS branch out of Moore, and I will come back at you with another lesson inspired by the Holy Spirit. How are with us? Lord's will, I want to entitle this lesson. Uh, scourges are sent for amendment. All right. Scourges are sent for amendment. All right. So uh, the different things that we go through, the punishment, sorry, um, you know, the tribulation that we experience. All right. There's a purpose behind it. All right. As we're going to read here, second Ezra chapter 16 and verse 19, it says, behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. All right. But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges. So looking at it on a grand scale, right, the various plagues that the Lord is sending upon this place. All right. And is going to continue to send. All right. As for amendment. All right. And now when we go into this word amendment, it says, uh, <clears throat> let me see. All right. Salakia. All right, so the word amendment or amend. All right. Well, now we'll just look up amendment. All right, so the word amendment, it says betterment, improvement, correction, reformation. Right. So, like I was mentioning on this grand scale, are the various plagues that the Lord is going to be sending. All right, it's sent for uh, correction. All right. Reformation. But um, the Lord already knows and it's already said that these people aren't going to turn from their wickedness. All right. And that they aren't going to, you know, change their ways. All right. Even like the scriptures talk about how the Lord knew that the uh, the the Amorites are right, that were in our land, how um, how they weren't going to change. All right. And the Lord was bringing various plagues upon them. Right. So that's on a grand scale. You know, uh, but looking at it in our individual lives, all right, we go through different tribulation, all right, and um, the scriptures talk about how the Lord chastens us for our profit, right? So, the the tribulation that we go through, all right, is uh, uh, for our improvement and for our uh, betterment, right? We're supposed to improve through the tribulation that we're going through, all right? We're supposed to reform. We're supposed to get better, right? And if this isn't happening, all right, what ends up happening? The Lord, uh, he intensifies, all right, the uh, the tribulation at times, okay? You know, until uh, he gets that improvement, all right, that refining or whatever it is that the Lord is trying to get out of us or to refine us in until that is uh, produced within us, right? You know, but if that isn't happening, all right, then... We could find ourselves in a position where the Lord uh, rejects us, man. And that's a fearful thing. All right. So that's why we have to be very mindful of the scourges. All right. And making sure that we are um, uh, seeking Yahweh Shai and asking, all right, what is it that the Lord is trying to show us and actually make those improvements? All right. Like, uh, like the counsel was given unto Job by Elhu. All right. All right, this is the book of uh, Job, chapter, mm, uh, that which I see. Man, how's it worded? Job 34 and 32, it says, uh, verse 31, surely it is meet to be said unto the most high. I have borne chastisement. I would not offend any more. That which I see not teach thou me. So there's things that the Lord could be trying to show us or trying to tell us. Right. And we may not see it. We may not recognize it. All right. It says, if I've done iniquity, I will do no more. All right. So that could be the case where we actually don't see what the Lord is trying to uh, bring out of us. All right. Trying to improve us in or trying to purge from out of us. Right. So we need to be praying for those things. All right. And then there's times where the Lord may speak through brothers. All right. And he speaks through our experiences or whatever the case may be. All right. And he's trying to work on us. All right. To uh, to better us. All right. 
He's scourging us so that we can get that improvement, right? And 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 showing that all right through the brothers, okay, all right, and through our various experiences. So we want to make sure that we are making steps towards that direction in whatever area the Lord is uh, uh trying to uh, work on us in, all right, because we don't want to be like the majority of our people that are being corrected, all right, going through trials and tribulations, but they aren't improving, all right. The Lord refers to them as reprobate silver, all right, as we're gonna grab here. All right, because even though they're catching hell, even though they're going through tribulation, they are not improving. All right. This is the book of uh, Jeremiah. Chapter six and verse. Uh, we'll start at verse uh, 28. It says they are all grievous revolters walking with slanders. They are brass and iron. They are all corruptors. And we don't want to be like this. All right. Our people that, you know, the Lord is looking at as being worthless. All right. It says, uh, the bellows are burned, the lead is consumed of the fire, the founder melteth in vain, all right, <laughs> for the wicked are not plucked away, right? So here it is, all right, the fire is being burned, okay, because this is uh, being, using the analogy of a, a person that's uh, purifying metals, all right? So it says, take away the dross from the silver and there shall come forth the vessel for the finer, all right? So dross is being purged off of us when we're in going through trials and tribulations, all right? That's why it says through the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. When you read that same precept in Ecclesiastes 7 and 3, when you read it in the NLT, it says um, uh, sadness, um, uh, how's it worded, all right? In the NLT, Ecclesiastes, let's just go to it real quick. Ecclesiastes 7 and 3, in the NLT, sorrow is better than laughter for its sadness has a refining influence on us. So, what brings the sadness, all right? It's the trials and tribulations that we experience at times, man. This is the book of Tobit. All right, so those trials and tribulations are supposed to bring a, refi uh, it's supposed to have a refining influence on us, right? But if we are not being refined, as we're going to go back to this in the book of Jeremiah, all right, we could be categorized as reprobate silver, and we don't want to be like that. As the Lord so told Ezekiel, be not rebellious as this rebellious house. We don't want to find ourselves... Uh, rebelling against the Lord while we have this truth, all right, where counsels are being given and we're not taking heed unto it, all right, the Lord is speaking to us in our everyday lives and the trials and tribulations and we aren't uh, paying attention, all right, we aren't making the adjustments, we aren't making the improvements, all right, we don't want to be uh, found in that case, all right, because we don't know at the end of the day, we don't know if we are of the elect, all right, we don't know if we're of that number, right, so we need to be moving in the fear of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai to make these adjustments in, in hopes that the Lord will have mercy upon us, man. All right, the scripture says in the book of Isaiah, the 55th chapter, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. So we have to forsake our own way. Then the Lord will abundantly pardon when you're reading that in the book of Isaiah, the 55th chapter. So if we aren't forsaking our own way, fighting to do that, all right, to put away the way that we want to move or what we want to do and this and that and the third and, you know, not taking heed into the spirit or whatever the case may be, if we aren't forsaking our own way, all right, then uh, uh, as it says in Isaiah the 55th chapter, that's the trait, those that forsake their own own way, that's the trait of those that are going to receive that mercy, all right? So if we want that mercy, we should be walking in that, all right? But anyways, this says, uh, Salaki, if I made that more complicated than it needs to be, all right, but this is the book of Tobit, chapter uh, 13 and verse 14. All right, it says, uh, Oh, blessed are they which love thee, for they shall rejoice in thy peace. Blessed are they which have been sorrowful for all thy scourges. Right, so the scourges is what brings the sorrow. All right, so the scourges is supposed to have a refining influence on us. Going back into that in the book of Ecclesiastes 7 and 3. All right, so it says, For they shall rejoice for thee when they have seen all thy glory and shall be glad forever. All right, so we want to make sure that we are mindful of the scourges, man. All right. Seeing that the Lord is taking us through certain things and making the improvements, making the adjustments. All right. Going back to this in the book of uh, Jeremiah, the sixth chapter. Jeremiah, chapter six. In verse uh, 29. All right. The bellows are burned. The lead is consumed of the fire. The founder melted in vain for the wicked are not plucked away. It says reprobate silver shall men call them because the Lord hath rejected them. All right. So we don't want to be found as reprobate silver, all right, because the impurities, the dross isn't falling off of us. We aren't making the improvements as we're going through the trials and tribulations. We aren't listening to the Lord, whatever the case may be, 
All right, we want to be very mindful of these things. All right, this is the book of um, uh, Second Corinthians. All right, Second Corinthians chapter seven. Second Corinthians chapter seven and verse uh, ten. It says, "For godly sorrow worketh repentance." All right. To salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. All right. So the scriptures talk about godly sorrow, which works repentance. All right. Now we go into the word repent. It says. All right. Be grieved over one's past and seek forgiveness. Feel such regret for sins, crimes, or omissions as produces amendment. So it produces an amendment. It pr produces what? A betterment, an improvement. All right. So if we aren't showing improvement, if we aren't showing betterment, then we aren't showing true repentance. Okay. The scriptures talk about let us not love in word nor in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Right. So our actions have to show forth repentance. All right. It's not just saying, you know, I feel bad or. You know, I'm sorry. And this and then the third. All right. You know, we do acknowledge our offenses as we're supposed to. All right. But the acknowledgement. All right. And uh, uh, doesn't it doesn't just stop with acknowledging. All right. We have to actually show forth the improvement. We have to actually show forth the betterment. All right. Because, you know, uh, when you look up this word. Uh, so we just read the word repent. But when you look at repentance, it says something that stood out to me. It said a uh, state of being penitent, sorrow and contrition for sin or wrongdoing, resulting in vigorous abandonment of it in one's life. Right. So we have to show a, a, a vigorous abandonment of certain things, man. All right. That shows the true repentance. Like, you know, now, of course, we're in the flesh and certain things do take uh, a longer time to battle through. All right. Certain things, you know, uh, may just slip our mind because of being in the flesh. All right. But uh, we have to show that sincerity. All right. The scripture says in the book of Sirach, how an individual, uh, how does it say he will repent from the heart? All right. Let's grab that in the book of Sirach, the 21st chapter. All right. Sirach chapter 21 in verse uh, six. It says, he that hateth to be reproved is in the way of sinners, but he that feareth the Lord will repent from his heart. So if we truly fear the Lord, then we're going to repent from the heart. All right. We're going to show that improvement. We're going to show that uh, uh, that change. All right. That reformation. OK. And it's going to be sincere. It's going to be from the heart, man. OK. So we don't want to go into the uh, go in the way of sinners. All right. Because what's going to be the end of the sinner? <laughs> all right. Destruction. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 29 and verse one. It says, uh, he that being often reproved, hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. Right now, let's read this in the uh, NIV. It says, whosoever or whoever remains stiff necked after many rebukes will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. So this is something that we want to be very, very careful of, man. Remaining stiff necked. All right. Being warned about certain things and or, or counseled about certain things and not taking heed because it eventually can lead to what? Being destroyed. So this is a fearful thing, man. That's why the scripture says work out our own salvation with fear and trembling, man. None of us are exempt from judgment. All right, even men of the Lord, even, you know, Lord, individuals whom the Lord loved got judged. All right, severely. Okay. You know, so we aren't exempt from these things, man. So we want to be very mindful of how we're moving, especially in these times that we're in, man. All right, because the Lord ain't playing around with none of us. Okay. And the Lord is very angry. All right. And we don't want to find ourselves on the wrong side of his wrath. All right, we should be looking to appease the wrath. Of the Alba Shem Yahweh Shai, man. Not uh, uh, invoking it, you know? So I'm going to end it right there through the Spirit. Lord's what I was edifying. I want to give all praises to Yahweh Baha Shem Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem Rakakwadash, the honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well, peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and in truth. With that, I'm going to say Shalom.